All right, so here we are in our heavy multi-roll, the Dornier 335A1. Uh, this airframe is going to be a little bit different than the other heavies we've looked at in the past. The air-to-ground ordnance reload is going to be on par with multi-rolls like the F2G or the J7W1, uh, but it carries a huge amount of ordnance, even more cumulative damage than what you would see with even the F2G. And if you fly this kind of like a multi-roll where you're kind of augmenting the damage with the ground damage with shooting down some aircraft, this definitely has some potential. But you really have to fly this as a true boom and zoom because this aircraft does not like getting into maneuvering combat despite the fact that it has the same turn times as other heavies because it has such a narrow envelope for turn velocity. Uh, it means that you really have to be aware of what your aircraft is doing when you try and make a maneuver on somebody. The guns on this are going to be less than what you would see with... Oh, let's pay attention to him. Are going to be less guns than you would see with a BVP-203 or less guns than you would see with any other heavy at this tier. You can see here, we have to stay above 300 miles an hour if we want to have a whisper of a chance of getting these aircraft to turn, but you can see that we definitely had the firepower and the sustained damage to be able to really take the hurt to the enemy. This aircraft really likes catching bombers and ground attackers. Let's go ahead and get a little bit of departure here. We know how this aircraft likes to fly. It likes to come in and attack unaware targets. So let's find somebody who's unaware. All three cannons kind of fire together. They all travel at the same relative velocity. So once you start getting good hit indicators, you just hold it down. Uh, this 30 millimeter combo is actually going to fire at a much higher rate than a normal 30 millimeter cannon setup would. So you do have a little bit more oomph to it. This is a, a weird airframe all around just because of the pusher-puller design. This isn't something you typically see in most instances. In history, this wasn't a very popular design, but it is a way to get a lot of power packed in a very tight area. But because these engines are so exposed, we typically see engines getting knocked out pretty regularly, either the front or the back, just based on incoming damage. There we go. So I've opted to go with engine repair as our uh, go-to on this airframe. But you can see with the 600 hit points we have, we're actually able to survive quite a bit of incoming damage. And the speed allows us to be able to stay on these bombers fairly easily. Despite the amount of hit points and firepower the B-32 had, we were still in pretty good condition and we're able to go after this other airframe. Looks like my team's having some issues in the mid. Let's see what we can do to help out here. We just lost the airfield, kind of expected that to happen. Don't be shy with shooting this, these cannons. Like I said, the 30s and the 15s actually fire together. They travel at the same velocity, so just hammer down much like you would with a BVP-203, and you'll do just fine. That's a platform I don't want to engage. Ouch. Two, one, and one. 
we got knocked out, but I believe we took out the repair facility, which will make life just a little bit tougher for them. This is going to be hard going up against a nimble heavy that's meant to take out other heavies, but I think that we're holding our own. I wish that we were defending this site, though. It would be great if we could do that. I'm going to head straight over there. There we go. Again, a BVP-203 probably would have been able to take that target out pretty easily in one pass. Get some power up. We lost this zone, which is going to be quite problematic for us. You can tell when that 30 hits, that's for sure. Climb rate is not too bad. We're at a pretty steep angle and maintaining nearly 400 miles an hour. Oh, that's a player? That is not where I would put that aircraft. That is way too high for that airframe. Heck, this is way too high for me. It's definitely too high for this guy. If this guy was looking for help. There we go. Luckily my bombs are just about back up. Let's get some free points here. Seems like you're not hitting, just stay consistent, stay on target. That should be enough to flip the zone. Okay. Okay, we need to separate from this engagement. We're never going to be able to turn with those two. I've watched people try and save me before, and they've gotten into these turning brawls. You have to get the distance, come back. I know it feels bad like you're leaving your, enemy, your friendly behind to the enemy here, but we can't get guns on, and we'll just both get killed. So we got to time our runs in here. And there, now we've actually saved our friendly. Let's come back around, find another target here. Get it, gave us a thank you, that's nice. Here's Zem, Assassin, let's see if we can catch him unaware. Come on, somebody kill him, please. He's almost dead, he made the mistake of ignoring me. Cool, we got him. Somebody just got killed, unfortunately. Another aircraft down. We just do not have the ability to turn on these guys. Unfortunately, that's a hard loss, but a good score for us overall. Zem, Zem Assassin is a great player. Really good fight for us. Uh, 
if you ever watch this, Luis, uh, you gotta fly lower, man. I know flying higher it means that you're safe, but the bombers need to fly lower. And I'm not talking like scraping the bottom of the earth or anything like that. But if you're not in the white numbers or at the higher echelon for the bombing run, your bombs are going to be way too inaccurate to be effective. That's why your score wasn't that high on personal points. Um, and I understand you were getting hassled by that BF 109 Z, but it's worth your while to stay lower, just respawn, come back, choose your moments. But uh, I digress. Uh, this turned into a really good match for us despite everything, right? We got 283,000 credits on a loss. We've got 17,000 personal points, and I thought we did pretty good considering what we were going up against. You have to be much more deliberate. You can't just charge in there. Uh, the XP58 is much more forgiving for that. You can charge in. You can kind of do a lot more turning fights, and we saw Zem Assassin use his xp58 to great effect uh, in fact so great that he got 20,000 uh, personal points uh, almost 21,000 and we can see here he managed to kill 18 targets uh, great battle for him and he also had uh, great players on his team as well that were putting up a really good fight uh, we did not do as well as he did but we still pumped out quite a bit of damage we did 28,000 damage to ground targets we managed to take out uh, three total ground sites and we assisted in destroying seven of them in addition to killing 13 aircraft three of which were bombers two of them being b-32s very heavy bomber aircraft so we did fairly well and the airframe performed well when we used it properly the trick here is, despite having a big 30 in the hub and feeling like it might be like your Yak-9U where you have to fire the main gun independently from the other two guns, all three of these guns have the same shell velocity, relatively speaking. So just get them all to hit. And if you're not hitting with a 30, just pull a little bit more lead and you should be able to get those guns on target. This is a 100% boom and zoom run. Uh, aircraft. I have opted for nothing but speed. So if we take a look at my setup here, I went with the improved polished skin and the improved upgraded engine. And when I'm able to get this thing specialized, I would put in the cooler on here so that way I can get another 10 seconds of boost or get that boost generated back up real quickly. This airframe can be quite devastating. But the air to ground ordinance is what makes this thing so devastating as a force multiplier and i'm going to show you some comparisons real quick because the xf5u can also carry bombs and for its bomb loadout let's see we've got the thousand pound bombs they only do 12,000 damage and they reload in 180 seconds okay now let's look at a multi-role the f2g known for having an impressive ordinance load with eight five inch rockets and a 1600 pound bomb but if you combine those two numbers together for the cumulative damage the 9000 for the bomb and the 12000 for the rockets you're still only looking at 21000 and again 120 second reload so not too bad now take a look at this airframe four 500 pound bombs or 250 kilograms it actually works out to be more than 500 pounds but 22 thousand cumulative damage and 120 second resupply that's pretty good this is a heavy multi-roll for all intents and purposes and if you guys watched uh, flight night friday with postal and i on saturday or watched his stream you'll note that we ran into a couple of instances where um, we were fighting against uh, aircraft that we're fighting against zones that needed to have a ground portion of the ground site destroyed because there was only a couple of aircraft to kill in order to flip the zone. So you rely on a ground attacker or a bomber on your team or a multi-role to be able to flip that zone for taking out ground targets. But they're not very dependable when they're bots. So this allows you to kind of take the power back into your own hands to be able to flip a zone. So early on, we were able to help out pretty easily with taking out a bunch of ground targets over at that command center 
because we had so many ordnance available for us. And then we could come back and help out again towards the end when we lost that site and needed to try and get it back. Now, could we have gone to another site and captured one of those other sites? Absolutely. But we can also be a heavy and use these big guns to be able to take out those bombers. Now, we might not be able to take him out as quickly as the BVP-203 can because his cumulative damage is uh, 595 damage while our cumulative damage for the forward firing guns is only 403. But you can see that for survivability, we get 600 hit points and 50 to our resistance to damage. while the BVP-203 only has 580 and 48 to resistance to damage. And this looks like a pretty beefy aircraft, right? So the DOE 335 is able to hold its own when it comes to going up against a lot of tail gunners and keep itself relatively safe. So this airframe definitely has some potential. For those of you who weren't able to get the BVP-203 BVP but want a German heavy premium, this is a good option. Um, I, I enjoy it. it. It's still a good airframe, but you got to treat all the guns like they're essentially the same armament, even though one of them is the big hard hitting 30. Now, the reason I say you can really hammer down on these guns is because it's actually a different 30 millimeter hub gun than what you would see with the BVP-203. You can see the damage output is actually higher at base because it actually has a 30% higher rate of fire. It even has a little bit more range as well, which allows you to be able to get those shells on target at greater range. And that's one of the reasons the Doe 335 is such a nasty piece of machinery in the right hands. So for those of you who are interested, yeah, it's a great aircraft, uh, but uh, is it worth some of the price points they have out there right now? Maybe not for those deluxe packages. It's really up to you, though, whether or not you want this specific paint job or if you're looking for something else. Uh, this paint job gives us a 5% boost to aircraft XP, and that's the real benefit. Uh, we also get a bonus to crew training, crew experience, just for having an emblem in general. So those are the options that come with the package, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, they work just like the same as any of the other ones do. But yeah, here it is. This is the Doe 335. Figured I'd throw out a review since it's now available for purchase instead of just having to unlock it through a special event. So as always, I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll catch you on the next one.